Sports. If you have not followed his Triple H Horse Racing Podcast, you're missing out. It's one of the best podcasts in the country. Good evening and welcome to episode 265 of the HHH Racing Podcast. I'm your proud host, Howard Kravis, live from New York. It's Saturday. No, it's not Saturday Night Live. It is the HHH Racing Podcast. Yes, it's a different background. I'm in the conference room here at the undisclosed hotel location here in the New York City area. I am psyched. I am pumped. Paul Halloran is also in the New York City area. We are both going to be going to the Belmont Stakes uh, weekend of races, as well as Patrick Kunzel, a co-host of Bet and Booze. And we're very excited to bring you tonight's Belmont Stakes preview edition, the late pick five, all stakes, all grade one, late pick five. Wow, it's gonna be tremendous. Please make sure you subscribe right there on the bottom right-hand side of the screen. After you do that, Hit that notification bell. That'll tell you when new content will rise on the show. And smash, I mean smash, pound that like button. We'd greatly appreciate it. That will send people to our YouTube channel. Of course, you can follow me on Twitter. You can see my name tag, at hkravitz. Scrolling on the bottom of the screen, hkravitzhorse at gmail.com. I know it's a little bit of an echo. The sound is not perfect. But again, I'm not in my own house. Things are a little bit different. Bear with me, folks. I'm only using one monitor tonight. The show quality is going to be excellent as usual. Just technically, it'll be a little more of a challenge, but we'll work through that. Uh, our next show is going to be next Monday night. So Monday night, 8 p.m. Eastern, we're going to have a review of the huge, uh, I'm assuming two-day, Belmont Stakes weekend action. So please join us this Monday night, 8 p.m. Eastern, for a great review and commentary about many of the uh, big stake races that are going to be occurring this weekend. You can listen to us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Anchor. Please make sure you do that. But as you know, we show a lot of replays and whatnot. This is a very visual medium. Probably best to watch on YouTube if you can. The Power Picks. I just sent out a, what is it, seven, eight-page Friday Power Pick tip sheet to all of you that subscribe. Right after the show, I'll be checking my email, and then I'm not going to be checking it until tomorrow's races. So if you want the tip sheet or you want to subscribe to the Power Picks, which is only $16 a month, it's only four bucks for a few, two big tip sheets this weekend, four bucks, that's it. Plus the next month, you got to email me ASAP. I can't guarantee I'm going to get stuff to you because of the situation here in New York. I'm not home with my PC and just, it's not going to be easy. I'll do the best I can if you subscribe um, after tonight as you hear this. We have a great website, hhhracingpodcast.com. Uh, great coast. Pete Visco has done a wonderful job with that. Um, all right. I believe that takes care of everything that we need to take care of. We got a lot of comments. Let's quickly bring up some comments before I bring on our coast. Let's see who is here. Christine Race. Of course, Christine is here. She's really getting ready for the weekend's racing. Excited about, yes, race two at Gulfstream. We're going to talk about that for literally one minute. Uh, we have DN is here. Singles Cody Wish. We're going to single Cody's Wish. You will find out. The air quality is not that bad. I, I thought they could have raced today. They were being cautious. That's fine. We'll talk about that a little bit when we bring on my uh, co host. Um, listen, I, who doesn't like Saturday Night Live? Uh, Brian A is here. Uh, better. Not sure. I'm assuming he means Bator, or maybe he's just better than everyone. Brian, welcome uh, to the show. Marco Perez is here from L.A. Marco, thanks for joining us from the West Coast, man. Appreciate that. Uh, let's see what else. We got Richard Avalar. Is that Chevy Chase or Lenny Kravitz? Uh, neither. It's Howard Kravitz. Uh, Simon Simon O'Neill. Whoops, sorry. We had Simon. We're, Simon from the U.K. What? Wow. What time is it out there? I'm, I'm impressed, Simon. Thanks for joining the show, man. Jim Pilars. Roshan. Oh, Brian was referring to the air quality. It is better. All right. We got, we got everyone here. Uh, again, if you are watching, please make sure you comment in the live chat. If you're watching on Twitter, you can only comment in the live chat if you go to our YouTube channel. So go to our YouTube channel, um, uh, HHH Racing Podcast uh, backslash C uh, backslash, oh no, sorry, YouTube.com 
uh, backslash C. Black. Well, no, you can look it up. Just go to the just go to YouTube and type in the HHH Racing Podcast. All right, let's bring on our co-host. Here we go. First, from the East Coast of Maryland, we have Sir Pete Visco, and from New York, I'm from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, from the Saratoga Special. I don't know. Could be any of those. Mr. Paul Halloran, guys, Belmont Stakes weekend. Here we go. 127 is the AQI in Elmont right now. That's down quite a bit. It was 152 earlier tonight. So it's really so, – explain to people what we're talking about, Paul, real quick. Let's just so the air quality the, – the reason it's pertinent is this afternoon the New York Gaming Commission came out with a ruling that said at 201 or above, they, they may not race. At 151 to 200, a vet would have to clear each horse – prior to racing under 150 and below it's all clear and the forecast for tomorrow is it's not supposed to be much above 120 so i i think i think we're uh, cautiously optimistic i think we're good i mean i hope so because bob and i here had to sit in the hotel room and play horseshoe indianapolis today you know desperate times play uh, call for desperate measures would we'd, we'd like to bet some new york racing live tomorrow well, we got some friends at Horseshoe, Brian Aragoni, John Dooley, people we've had on the show, but I, I get it. Um, all right, so that's the air quality situation, guys. It sure looks like they're going to be racing. We're very excited about that, for sure. Uh, Pete, let's quickly talk about, uh, before we get into the pick five, a horse called Shards. Now, real quick, um, all many of us on the HH Racing Podcast, including Sapil from Benton and Boozen, have – a minority share of a few horses through Crownsway Racing. And our first horse that we have together, guys, like as a group, very excited. And these are not like $50 micro shares. These are pretty decent shares, a few percents, whatever. Uh, is a horse called Shards at Gulfstream Park. This is a very fast Buchero Colt. So if you're a fan of the show, which of course you are, uh, if you're watching this, Pete, we want to cheer on Shards. It's race two. He's the two horse at Gulfstream this Saturday, it's a four and a half uh, furlong dirt race for Florida Breds. Pete, this horse gets out of the gate well and is very fast. Kelsey Danner trains uh, this horse. Yeah, it's very exciting. I mean, especially that we can all share in it together. I mean, there's nothing better than that. So you know, we'll see. Put a couple, put a couple shekels on on the horse and and, and let's bring it home. It's not too hard, Paul. You just four and a half furlongs on there. Just break and go, right? There's not, nothing to tell. I mean, just gotta go. You just go that quickly. Because if, if you don't break, you can move on to your next activity. Yes. Uh, well, we have high hopes. Uh, they, they, we think very highly of him. Uh, Crownsway likes his horse. And so, anyway, uh, cheer for us on Gulfstream Park Race 2 Saturday. The horse's name is Shards with an S-H. All right, guys. People don't want to hear about Shards. People want to hear about the late pick five Saturday. <laughs> Not only is this a late pick five Saturday, guys. And not only is it Belmont Stakes Day, it is all stakes late pick five, and it is all grade one pick five, grade one, big fields, awesome card. Uh, Pete and Paul, before we get to the PPs, your first thoughts when you just looked at the five races as a whole. Go ahead, Paul. Well, you know, the common refrain is it, it's like a Breeders' Cup. You know, it, it obviously doesn't have as much European participation. But as far as the overall caliber of the racing, you know, it, it's it's just underneath that. It, it's it's pretty darn close, you know. Um, it's uh, and good for them. You know, New York has made a conscious decision to do this the last five years to have these big days. You know, you'll see the a similar card on Whitney Day. The Travers card is probably just below this, or very uh, equivalent to this. Uh, but yeah, this is just spectacular. Yeah, um, it, it's going to be huge. Uh, Pete, is it everything you'd expected just as you were glancing through it? Oh, of course. I mean, there's nothing more exciting. It's probably the, I would agree with Paul, it's basically the second best card, I think, of the year. I still like Saturday Breeders' Cup a little bit better just because of all the participation. But, I mean, it doesn't get any better and it's fantastic. And, uh, I mean, and we have some stars here. So, hopefully the stars rise to the top and we can see some absolutely fantastic performances guys i counted a handful of potential breeders cup winners for 2023 on this card oh easy uh, and of course like you said there's no euros uh paul we're gonna go to the 
PPs right now, but we have one more question I want you to answer. Richard Avalar, let's, I know we'll talk about Cody's wish, but yeah. obviously you have a strong connection as you're writing a book about Cody's wish and it's a great family. Tell everyone who's representing Cody's wish this weekend. Yeah. So Cody's wish the horse is in Saratoga. I don't, I, honestly, I don't know, Richard. Uh, he has been uh, with Bill Mott. Bill Mott is one of the first guys into the Oklahoma at Saratoga. So after winning the Churchill Downs uh, race, Cody's wish shipped up to Saratoga. Paul, I appreciate uh, he's the boy, not the horse. What's that? I think he's talking about Cody Dorman, not the horse. Oh, okay. Well, we'll get to Cody too. Yeah. Uh, Cody, Cody himself is not coming to this trip. His father, Kelly, is coming tomorrow. He is coming in with some of the Godolphin folks. He's scheduled to come in with Danny Mulvihill and uh, Mike. They, of course, Godolphin, if you look at the PPs, they have several good chances over the two days. But uh, Cody opted not to make the trip. However, they are, uh, if and when Cody's Wish runs at Saratoga, which would be a logical spot for him, they are hoping to make their inaugural trip to Saratoga. So Cody will be there. Terrific. So as far as the horse, he'll be in town. If he's not here, he'll be here tomorrow. Right. Uh, it, it's going to be very exciting. We love watching this horse run. Uh, guys, let's get into the races now. Again, I'm working with uh, a different Wi-Fi. Um, I have one monitor, not two. Things are going to look a little bit different. Our PPs are not going to be interactive, but we can't click on them. But everything is going to be uh, fantastic. It's going to be all good. So uh, get your pens and pencils and paper and ready to go. This is my violin, Pete. This is my mini violin. <laughs> yeah, dang it! I, I thought you were. I thought you were. Weekend. I thought you were counting the money already, Paul. I thought, That's what I, thought well, I thought we were counting. I'm money. practicing, Pete. <laughs> all right, guys, let's get to it right now. I'm going to go ahead and share. Hopefully, it's going to. This is going to work effectively here. And there we go. And I'm going to go ahead and bring up our picks on the bottom of the screen. There they are there. Let me make sure is, everything is what I want. Okay. And all right, guys, here we go. The late pick five that – there's a few pick fives, by the way, everyone, on Saturday. When I say the late pick five, I should really say the all-stakes pick five. There is a pick five that starts in race nine and ends in race 13. We're covering the all stakes, all grade one pick five that and that will have the biggest pool for sure that ends in the Belmont stakes. The first race we're going to talk about, race eight. It's about 342 Eastern. It's, of course, a grade one. It's the Woody Stevens. Always a great race. This is for restricted three-year-olds, seven furlongs. And wow, is this a loaded, huge field of 13 the Moyline favorite is the number four, General Jim, uh, for Suge and Louis Saez. This is a horse that I believe Pete tipped out um, on Derby Day. He won the Pat Day Mile. Fort Bragg is also in here who finished second in that race. Uh, let me go ahead and switch to uh, the PPs. Pete, you're going to go first. Again, everything's going to take a little bit longer, so bear with me, everyone. Um, let me go ahead and... Um, Shut that down. I'll go ahead and bring up the PPs. Pete, you're going to be talking about General Jim. What what you what brought you to this horse in the first place a month ago? Well, it's funny because I actually like this horse in the Fountain of Youth underneath. That was going to be my my Fountain of Youth underneath horse underneath Forte, and he wound up scratching. And I just just watching his race. I, I like the race when he beat Super Chow. I know Super Chow wasn't the greatest horse in the world, but he was quality okay. enough. And I just think this horse came back in 2023 from two to three, put on the dirt and was just much improved. And if you looked on that January 1st race, if you watch the replay, he was blocked terribly. He definitely would have won that race if he gets out. So if you looked at that race and said, well, if he wins that one coming into the swale, the swale was OK. It wasn't the best field in the world. Small field. I just liked him there. I liked him, like I said, in the Fountain of Youth, came back. I just thought he was ready to pop a big one, and he did. And, and I liked him over Fort Bragg, actually, so I had the exacta as well. I just think this horse is improving, and I think he, this is what he does. He's good at sort of a one-turn horse, so I think this is right where he wants to be. Now, Pete, I've heard a few podcasts this week. I try to focus on my own work, but I do like to listen to a few other people. Um, I think there is paralysis by analysis, so I highly re recommend all of you at home focus on just you know a few people to listen to, obviously – if you're listening to this, we are one of them. We greatly appreciate that. 
I heard a few things, Pete, that this number, some people think it's a little high, this 100, because apparently, and we don't, we can't show the chart, but many horses improved their buyers by 10 points. And some people are a little bit suspect. Do you feel like this buyer is correct that he improved that much and that so many other horses improved that much? That is a small concern for um, some experts I've heard. No, I, I heard the same thing. And, and in all honesty, it doesn't bother me, even if it is a little high. I mean, it depends on how high. I mean, I, I still think if if nothing else, he definitely improved and he's just on a steady improve. So I, I'm not too worried if it's supposed to be a 98 or a 97. I don't get too bogged down. Plus, the time form came back 121. So it's consistent. At least those two are consistent enough where. I just think he's a good horse. I mean, this is a great field as we get to our pick five ticket. I got about 97 horses in this race, so he's no lock. I just really like this horse and have liked him all year, so I'm going to stick with him. Yeah, and there's a lot of speed in this race. Uh, we, please comment as much as you can. We're not going to bring up as many comments as we would on a normal show because, again, the, my technology here in the hotel. But please make sure you comment. We love the banter back and forth between uh, the people that are commenting. Uh, there's plenty of early speed in this race now um so I, I think it could set up for a closer of course you never know paul you're going with uh, a horse that is turning back and i love turnbacks in general uh you're going with arabian lion i'm boy i think this horse can be the favorite paul i don't i guess it doesn't really matter but i think he's gonna be the favorite over general jim just a gut feeling because of the ones and the baffer and the blah 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 he ran really well in the sir barton although it was a weak field and he got away with an easy pace. He almost beat first mission, a horse that we really liked um, for the Derby that, you know, he got hurt. What's your thoughts here on Arabian Lion with Johnny V? Well, I think you have to decide about the Pat Day Mile. Now, I do think it was a pretty good race. Uh, we have four horses coming out of it. You referenced the figures, Howard. Seven horses in the Pat Day Mile went up at least 10 points on their buyer from their previous start. So yep. that's possible, obviously. But, you know, I just think the reason I like Arabian Lion is I don't think he has to go to the lead to win this race because of the cutback. I am a sucker for cutbacks, I admit it. You know, I'm not, you know, I'm not cutting the front of the line to bet Bob Baffert typically. But I just think that this horse doesn't have to go the lead. It's coming off a Korea best number, um, obviously stayed, you know, stayed on the East Coast. Um, I, I just, you know, I, I think he has the profile that wins this race. And Howard, we, we got to talk about the races, but we should at least reference that we did a whole show on it last year. If you want to talk about sports records that will likely never be broken, the great Woody Stevens, five Belmonts in a row. So hats off to Woody Stevens and we move on. Yeah, we had a show. I think, was that the show we had Lafitte Pinkai? Uh, we had Lafitte uh, Pinkai Jr. on. Yes, we did. Go, go, go back to our archives, folks and, folks, and look up the Lafitte Pinkai interview. We talked about Woody Stevens quite a bit. Um, I've got both these horses in the mix. I think they are both uh, very live. But, guys, you got to let me talk here for about one minute because this horse that I want to discuss is one of my top plays of the entire weekend. Um, and it, it needs a little bit of explanation for sure. As you can see on the bottom of the screen, guys, my top pick in this race is going to be on the outside, and it's the number 12, Gilmore. Now, Gilmore is in the Pac-8 mile, um, had a wide trip, and this is a good closer who's improving. Uh, I think he was up closer than he wanted to be, and he ran well behind General Jim and um, Fort Bragg. He was not going to win that race. I'm let, let's be honest, he, he never looked like a winner at any point, but he is an improving horse, okay? Now, I believe there is a ton of, whoops, I believe there is a lot of early speed in this race, guys, a lot of early speed. I mean, let's take a look at the pace complexion. New York Thunder from the rail is really fast. He's got to go. Arabian Lion will be probably more tactical. Um, you've got um, Armand, who probably has no hope, but he's got speed. Harrodsburg has speed. Federal judge should be up pretty close. I think Fort Bragg will be behind. Fort Warren also. Uh, Dark Vector's got some speed. Victory Formation uh, should show some speed. Drew's Gold is serious speed. So, guys, 
There's a lot of speed in this race. This is exactly the kind of horse that I like. And let me bring up a few names from the past that you guys may or may not remember at home. Are you ready? Because I did some research. Have there been some closers to win the Woody Stevens at prices in the last 10 years? How about Tom's Ready in 2016? Remember that horse? Seven to one. 2018, still having fun. 13 to one winner of the Woody Stevens. And then he broke my heart because uh, I had the horse to finish second. I think Pete had a good story about this horse. How about 2019 Hog Creek Hustle at 19 to one? Remember that, guys? This race falls apart a lot, and horses, I shouldn't say clunk up, come from the clouds and win. My philosophy here is there's a lot of speed. We don't have to say anything, you know, Irad's fantastic, although he will lower the price a little bit. I love this horse to finish in the money for sure and maybe upset the field if they go as fast. I think they can. Gilmore is one of my top plays of the weekend. Use in all spots in the try. Thoughts on Gilmore, either one of you. I, I have Gilmore as an A. So wow. not, <clears throat> he's basically, he was, he was my third horse. It was between him and the one switching back and forth in my third. I, I love, I'm coming right back with the Pat Day triple. So I, I love the top three. So um, I'm with you 100%. I think he's got a huge shot to win this race. Uh, Paul, I know you don't have your top three, but this is a great uh, horse to use underneath if you don't think he can win, right, in the tries for sure. Because you know this horse is going to make a run late. It's almost for sure. Yeah, I have written on my PP's board. Uh, you know, I had him as a board play. Yeah. Um, you know, he, he's coming off a good number, as you say. I agree. He ran well last time. He wasn't winning. I, I kind of think Fort Bragg ran as well as anyone in that race. And as a result, I, I have him as one of my A's. Um, I, I think this horse is more likely to get up for a piece, but uh, I was listening myself to uh, a couple of podcasts on the drive down today, and, and I heard this horse mentioned more than once. So you're yeah. not alone. Yeah, I don't think – I think – I mean, it's hard for me to believe this horse is not going to be – close to 10 to one. I mean, you might get back down a little bit, but there's so many options here. I have a very hard time believing this horse would be lower than eight to one. Um, a lot of us like Fort Bragg. We've all got Fort Bragg in second. P, you want to talk about this horse? I thought he ran well. General Jim won fair and square. Puts the blinkers on, which I find a bit interesting. I'm not sure what to make of that, Pete. Yeah, I mean, this, this, this is one of those horses where you looked at and thought, wait till he cuts back. Wait till he gives up on the derby trail yeah. so you know we see those all the time and we talk about them and arabian lion is sort of a in a similar boat where you're like let's get this horse doing what he should be doing and this is right up his wheelhouse and, and last time at, at the mile i thought it was too he's got rosario which is always a little funky you never know especially in a huge field like this he'll wind up being 11th at one point and too far back and that'll be problematic Bafford actually has had some success first time blinkers in. Oh, it's not first time, I guess. So I probably that's probably the wrong stat. Yeah. I noticed he had it one other time, but he's had success putting blinkers on horses, even in graded stakes races. It's probably just make sure this horse gets close, especially in a field like this. You don't want him too far back. I don't think that's his game. I think he's pretty tactical, but I think he has a huge shot. We just don't want him to get Rosario out of it. Yeah, that's well, that, the, the new verb, right? The new Ironic, verb, Pete, yes. ironically, Pete, ironically, he might have gone a little too soon with him last time. He did. He did, which I was happy about being that I had General Jim on top. So I was happy that he caught him, but it was nice watching the two of them. Yeah, I think he did. But he he hung in game, too. And I mean, it he was a fight well. all the way down that lane, man. Yeah, you know, uh, I Matt watched the replay. Knows, and, Matt and I wrote my notes. He ran the best race. Goal. We're going to yeah. talk about Drew's gold here in just a second. Uh, Trish, now she wants to watch Happy Gilmore <laughs> on an angle I can get behind. Uh, we agree, Trish. Um, Drew's gold, guys. That's the last horse we're going to talk about. This is a really interesting horse. I'm, I'm definitely using him. I'm assuming you guys are using this horse somewhere. There's one horse that Drew's gold reminds me of very much so in, pe in recent thoroughbred racing history. Any of you two want to take a guess or someone at home? Who does Drew's gold the PPs and the whole vibe, anything remind you of? Anyone in particular? Who knows what I'm thinking? Mm -mm. Paul, you want to take a guess? What horse? I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the PPs and, and, and trying to uh, – Damon's Mound. No, but that's a, that's, you're on the right track. Our very fast horse from low-profile connections. 
who drew the outside in a big three-year-old sprint race? How about Run Happy? This horse reminds me of Run Happy. Now, I'm not saying he's as good as Run Happy, but he's really fast. He's got low-profile connections. Run Happy, did he win the Woody Stevens and the Kings Bishop or Alan Jerkins? I can't recall. I think he did. I think he won one of the two. One of the two, okay. But I know he, I the, the, he won the, I think he won the, the um, I think it was still called the King's Bishop at the time. Um, but he won at a price. I don't know if this horse can get the distance, guys, but this is a very fast horse who gets a great post for a jockey that has a lower profile because, guys, you don't want a jockey that has to make a lot of decisions. And Gomez can just get out of there, look to his left, and make a decision. I think he's possible, but this is an awfully tough spot. Yeah, the post. The post is what scared me a bit. And you know, Chapman's over. I forget if it's over twenty three or something in graded stakes races. So it's 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 a lot going against him. And I think he's someone who probably would want to have pretty close to the pace. And like you said, there is a ton of pace in here. He could sit off, but he also could sort of get hung outside. And I just thought it was going to take a lot of work. But he's on the he's on the ticket for me, for sure. I mean, like I said, I have about six or seven deep, so that's not saying much, but yeah. The only horse before we go on to the next one is the one that I just want to mention. I have him in third. Sure. He's, he's, he's a price. If you watch his races, he looks fast as can be, and he's he powers away from fields. He's never run on the dirt. He's run two races on the synth, one on the turf, but he just looks great doing it, and again, there is a ton of speed, but my thought was, hey, for some reason, this horse gets out from the one hole and just goes, he's tough, man. He kicks away in the lane and at 12 to one, uh, I'll take him. And he's on my, he's on my a line. And again, I think there's a lot of speed, but Arabian line is one. He's not fast. He's not super fast. Whereas no. like he runs them off your feet. So yeah. I think if the one does that and maybe some of the outside speed has some trouble, I, I like this horse on my ticket. And if he takes to the dirt, which that 46 and two, uh, the 46 and two workout at Mammoth says the dirt might not be a problem for him. So we'll see. I'm not going to knock anyone who likes this horse. Let's go on to the Jiper guys. We're not going to talk 20 minutes on each race, but that these, a few particular races need to talk more. The Jiper. Wow. What a fantastic race. Uh, this one is, I mean, we're going to say that several times. Uh, let me bring us full screen. Sorry, guys. There we go. Okay. Six furlongs, $400,000. They're going, they're on the turf, of course. It's a field of thir- sorry, 14 with some AEs with Coppola, horse that we talked about a little while ago, uh, on the AE list. The more line favorite here, and deservingly so, is a Philly, a six, sorry, a mare, six year old mare, Brad Cox, Tyler Gaffield, and Caravel. Now, guys, this was a horse that they were strongly considering for uh, Ascot. And according to the connections, and I have to believe them, that because of the transportation and just the everything that goes around with transferring a horse overseas and where the horse would be, um, I, I guess, stabled over there. I, I don't think we really got real details. Um, she's not going. That's probably the best for this horse. I'm not sure she's good enough to win at Ascot. And by the way, we're going to be live on the first day of Royal Ascot right here on the HHH Racing Podcast with Davey Lane, by the way. Very excited about that. Um, your picks are on the bottom of the screen. Paul, we're going to go to you first. And Paul, in Christoph Plamat, we trust. I saw your picks. I was like, yes, someone else believes in this horse. It's a very tough spot. But I'll tell you what, Big Invasion is super talented. I think he's a little bit dirtied up. I don't want to talk more about him because you're going first. What does he like about Big Invasion? Again, I'm going to bring us all on the screen in order to bring up the PPs. This is a horse that I think he's six to one more in line. I'm going off of memory now. But I think he's got a real live shot, Paul. But he does need some pace in front of him, most likely. Well, you would be hard-pressed to find a combination of a bad, a tough trip and bad ride combined as you could with this horse last race. No question. Uh, obviously, one has a lot to do with the other. Please uh, watch the replay, he, folks. Again, we apologize. God for forbid he, he, he could have fallen. He, he, oh, I watched it. I don't um, mean you. I mean people. Should watch he, after everything else, when it, it looked like he might find a small seam in the stretch, he just about clipped heels and, God forbid, could have gone down. And 
you have tur a turf force go down when they're all bunched up, you got a real problem. You know, again, some of it's the nature of the beast, which is a turf sprint, big field, 11 horse field, but had them inside waiting, waiting, waiting. Stop me if you've heard this before. And then look to bring them out just a little in the stretch. There was a, a hole at one point, didn't get through it. And then when he finally did try to get through a hole, there was a horse there. He, as I said, he almost clipped heels. So, I mean, he finished four and a half back. He, he was running at the very end of the race, if you watch it. I think the race is the, the widest open race in the sequence. Uh, I think Caravelle is a little vulnerable uh, in this spot, uh, going the extra half furlong. I know it's only a half furlong, but it could make a difference here. Um, and I, you know, the 10 has to get a better trip. If he gets an appreciably better trip, I think he has a very good shot. How was that, Howie? All right. I thought that was excellent. We got to mention uh, another co host. Boy, everyone's supporting the show tonight, especially our great bed and boozing guys. Who, by the way, if you're betting the card tomorrow, Friday, please go back and watch episode 25 of Bet and Boozing last night. They covered Friday's card like a glove, it was fantastic. Please check that out. Charlie Freeman, who's still trying to recover from uh, the Chris Paul uh, release, uh, is going 12, 8, 10. He's co-host of Benton Boozen. Caravelle's Ultra Talents, I think, Big Invasion and Recipe Red, who is a horse that I know, Paul, you've chased quite a bit of Recipe Red, I believe, can rebound from tough trips. Charlie, thanks for watching the show. Pick 5, Brian, a, a new viewer. Pick 5, Brian, thanks for joining the show. Joel does get into trouble in some of these large fields. Uh, Paul, he doesn't need large fields to get in trouble, does he? No, and, and look, again, we're not stupid. He's a Hall of Famer. I get it. But he, he did not have a great spring, and, and that ride on – just go watch the big invasion race, and, and you make your own decision. Having said that, you know, he's – look at – especially in a turf sprint, by the way, of all his, of all his iterations, he typically is best in turf sprints, so – uh, yeah. Look at I'm 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 going right back to the well. Pete, I don't know if you want if you saw that comment. Someone wanted to know what how, Cox's win percentage at Belmont. If you could look that up. Twenty two in the last five years. That would be what is it? Twenty two percent. Last five years at Belmont. Yes, that's pretty damn good. It's better than I thought, to be honest. Um, Two hundred seventy seven starts, one hundred forty seven wins, ROI of one sixty nine. Man, Paul's sharp as a whip tonight. I love it. And, Although, and you know you could get wine to go in New York, by the way? <laughs> I think you can get a lot of things to go in New York. Um, oh, no, I got a nice rosé sangria right here to go. It's terrific. Uh, I digress. Go ahead. I, I'll just very quickly echo Big Invasion, Pete, and then we'll get to your, your thoughts in, in this race. Um, he's got to run the race of his life. He ran a 99 last year as a three-year-old, and I think he was one of the best three-year-old tour sprinters I've ever seen. He's got a wicked turn of foot. I don't take much stock in the first race at Gulfstream, guys. That was only five furlongs. He did what he needed to do was a prep for the Churchill Downs race. He does – I don't I don't know if there's a ton of early speed in this race. I'd like to see Joel get the source a little bit more into the game. But I think the six furlongs and Belmont, this configuration, Pete, for me, hits this horse right between the eyes. And your horse, Casa Creed, also likes – uh, this turf course. He won this race last year. It's not on the PPs, uh, Pete, but he won this race last year. I was there for it. So was Paul with an unbelievably great and I must say perfect trip. He's coming back from um, Saudi Arabia. He just missed in that race. He is a seven-year-old. I have small concerns, Pete, that he might not be as good as last year and he got a perfect trip last year. But in saying all that, he is a very likely winner if he runs his race. And actually, he's won this race two years in a row, just two for the years. record. Yeah. So, I, I mean, he loves the course. I love this horse. So this is, this is a little bit of a heart play, too. Not that it's not a good play on talent. We just don't know. I mean, he ran that race he ran in Saudi Arabia. It was fantastic. Bathurat Leon's a good horse. That was a good that was a solid field. So he, I thought he ran his race and actually I thought he was going to win coming down the lane. I, I actually had him in that race. Mm -hmm. So I look at the 
this is the, this is what he likes. He likes it here. Obviously, he likes this race. I, I just think this is one Mott and Saez combo. Three out of the four on the Belmont turf they've won together. So well, let's just make that, and we'll keep that going. I know, I know that's right. We're right up Paul's alley. A little Mott, a little Saez. I know he doesn't mind that. I just love this horse. I think there's a little more speed in here than than you think. So okay. because I especially think Caravel, obviously from that 12 hole is going to have to go. She has no other way of winning than being on the top. I think nothing better is going to go. I think there's a few other. Who else is going to go? That's my, that's my concern for the closers in this race. I suppose yeah. the three, but I don't, I don't know. Some of those were down the hill and those were a mile. I don't, I don't know how, and Johnny, he's not really a sun guy. I'm just concerned that care guys, a lot of people are going to try to be Caravel, right? Pete, like a lot of people I've heard all week long, everyone's against Caravel, against Caravel. I don't know if she's going to get the six, but there's not a lot of speed. Can you talk a little bit about the five? Pete, why have you go first? You guys both have this horse in third. And I know you mentioned this horse last night. I don't have this horse as an A and or B, but I have it as an extreme backup. Um, I have a lot of respect for these connections, obviously. Yeah, I, this is another one where I think if you look at that, if you if you look at the last race, it was just outclassed. I mean, obviously that field with Chez Pierre, Modern Games, up to the mark, those horses, if that race has come back phenomenal, probably one of the best races of the year in terms of what happened after that. Now we pick up Pratt. I, I think this horse will sit off a little bit more. And, and I think last time being on the lead maybe wasn't what he wanted to do. Sit this horse off. There is speed. I love the pickup of Pratt. I, I just think that last race looks a little uglier than it is, but was in contention with top horses, the top turf horses in the country. Now we're getting the cut back to what I think this horse really wants to do. The the Brown Pratt connection is unbelievable. They if, look at the 15 for 48, but 35 for 48 in the money at yeah. Belmont on the turf. So this horse is going to, I think this horse will be there. This horse is going to run his race. May not be good enough. That's the question. I mean, especially looking at the buyers, just may not be good enough. That's a different conversation. But at the price, I'll take the shot that maybe the cutback moves this horse forward. Paul, I know you watch Naira a lot, as I do. I think Pick 5 Brian makes a good comment that we haven't mentioned. The rails are going to be down. They obviously haven't run in a few days. The inside is going to be very fresh and the better part of the turf course that may or may not make a difference um, over the weekend. If inside horses win more often, that could absolutely be your reason why. Yeah, but one thing to consider, and I heard Andy talking about this uh, on Steve Bick today on the way down, Howard, the rails have been set extremely far out as a rule. So it may not just be the inside. You know, you, you could have like the five or six path also okay. being on uh, that same uh, virgin type ground. Uh, but no, it, it is a fair point that no rails at all, um, which means, you know, it, it, it could be pretty quick. Paul, as we get on to the third race, uh, Jim Pilar's, I don't want to touch this comment. You seem oh, to be with your, with your wits. You might be the one who may or may not. You are a PR guy. Any thoughts um, about Jim's comment, which I'm going to not read on the bottom of the screen? <laughs> Christine, I mentioned it. She said, nay. Yes. yes. Um, we'll, we'll just have to move on to, to that. To All right. I thought Paul might have something that. appropriate to retort. Let, let, let's, Jim, that, that was one to nine for her to say that, Jim. <laughs> All right. Let's uh, – wow, I got sidetracked. <laughs> okay. Let's go on the next race. Race 10 coming up on the bottom of the screen. You see our picks right now on the bottom of the screen. This is the Met Mile. And – Again, I, this little delay in showing stuff, guys, is me doing some transition behind the scenes. So uh, that's why, Paul, you we're, we're all general fans of Cody's Wish, um, but you have to bet, of course, with your head. You can bet with your heart. We've all done it before. Not only is Cody's Wish a great story, he's just extremely logical in this race. But I will say, and I want to ask you both this first question right off the start. Is this race, even without Taba, is this race tougher than the Breeders' Cup dirt mile he won last year, Paul Allard? I would say no, because I don't think there's anyone in this close to as good as Cyberknife, in my opinion. Pete? 
I think it might be a little deeper. Maybe I think the top horse is, you know, Cyberknife. I, I, I'm not as big of a Cyberknife guy, though, so I think this one. But there's a lot of horses in this race that are disappointing more often than not. So I, I don't know how you figure that in. So, like, there's good horses name recognition-wise and, and result-wise in some races, but there's a lot of horses in here who also disappoint. Well, well it's a good point, Pete. Not. Dr. It, it Show. is deep. It is deep. You're right, Pete. Dr. There's Show a lot of horses. A, yeah. a Breeders' Cup sprint race. Charge it has run some big races on this track. Zanon, I think, is sort of a horse you're referring to, Pete, but his numbers are good. Repo Rocks has been freaky good lately, uh, last race. And White Abario, uh, with a newly trained Dutro, has run some big races. I, I think it's definitely deeper, and I actually think it's better. I think this is going to be Cody's Wishes' toughest test he's ever had, guys. That doesn't mean uh, he can't win because we've all got him on top. He's 7-5, to five, more line. Everyone sees our picks on the bottom of the screen. Pete, I'm going to let you go first with Cody's wish here as I go ahead and uh, carefully bring back the PPs. Um, the rail, I guess, would be a concern. And is there enough speed to set up for Cody's wish or doesn't even matter, Pete? I mean, I think there's plenty of speed in this race, which is another reason why. But I, he, Cody's wish might be the best horse in training. So until somebody beats him or until somebody even gets – all that close. I mean, even when he beat Cyberknife, I just thought he looked like a winner coming down the lane. I just think he might be just the best horse. He's they they ran him from a phenomenal year. Bring him back at five, where maybe it, old school. Maybe he'll just get better, and this will be an even better year than last year. It seems like, and, and Paul would know this better. Seems like they're pushing him to try and stretch him out, and eventually maybe hit the classic. So I, I think all systems are go for this horse and. We all love him on the show, and I think on paper, I think he's just the best horse in this field. Paul, I'm, I think you have to be careful with works. We, we've talked about this on the show many times. Don't just get caught up in bullet works and fast times. <laughs> that being said, Paul, and we are both love Saratoga, and of course you've been there a lot more than I have, these training times on the training track at Saratoga, which is deeper, are ridiculous. I mean, this horse is absolutely training – out of his skin. The last workout, Howard, where you know, and, and you know, obviously there aren't as many horses up there. They'll they'll start the main track opens this week, by the way. So they'll start okay. however, on that day when he went 46 and 4, which is ridiculous on the Oklahoma, I believe the second fastest workout was about uh, around 48-ish. So uh <laughs> He wow. doesn't seem to have had, you know, <laughs> any ill effects of getting a year older. You know, look, the, the way he can lose is this. You you mentioned the deepness of the field. So every one of those other horses could beat him if something happens. Dr. Shivell, if he gets the extra furlong. Charge it if he reverts back to the form that he had. He ran a 111 at Belmont last year. Zandon if he runs, say, his bluegrass of last year. Repo rocks, I don't know what's going on with him. Uh, you know what, uh, Jamie <laughs> Ness, you know what, uh, uh, Harry Houdini has nothing on Jamie Ness with this horse. Hey, Paul, I think this is the horse I want to win the least of the entire weekend. I'm sorry. I apologize to the connections. It's just how I feel. I got to say well, how I feel. You know, again, anything can happen, but – He's running in the 60s, and now he's running 111s, whatever. But I'm saying if he can duplicate that, so there's an if. White Abario, if he gets back to his, I don't know, Cigar Mile, say, or Florida Dirt. So the, every one of those horses could win if, if, if. Yeah. You know, this guy, and, you know, obviously I'm not objective. I'm what, we're so wrapped up in him, but. You know, seeing him in person on the backstretch every day at Churchill and seeing him run that race, that was not a fast pace. Uh, necessary. It was an honest pace, but it wasn't ridiculous. No. Um, and, and just seeing where he came from and the way he's worked since, again, they look at they run the, the reason they run the races is you don't win it on paper. But I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not looking for reasons to try to beat him. If he gets beat, he gets beat. But you hinted at it, Howard. I have no idea what Mr. Mott's thinking. I know what Mr. Halloran's thinking. Mr. Halloran's thinking, win this race impressively and then try to get one uh, an extra eighth in the Whitney at Saratoga. 
and then see what happens from there. Yeah, I mean, he's just th- – this is my most likely winner of, of, of the weekend, guys. Um, and I'm, I'm, trying, I'm trying to be objective about it. I just think it's going to set up for him. He's training great. I'm not concerned about the rail only because it's obviously a long run into the turn and there's plenty of speed. I, I hope he wins. I think he could put on a show. I think you could see something really special, and I'm hoping we do on Saturday. Now, there are other horses in this race – We've mentioned guys in this Met Mile, which is just one of the best races of the year uh, by far. Pete, you're going with, uh, you're going with Repo Rock second. Paul, you're going with Zandon second. I'll let you guys talk about those two. I really don't have um, too much that I want to say uh, about this race. I'll and I'll briefly talk about Charge It. Let's just quickly go through those three. Uh, Pete, you'll go first um, with Repo Rocks. Not that much. That I don't want the Nest Juice to beat me, so I'm gonna. I'm going to, I like, I figured if he runs, if he runs that 111 race or the 109 race, he's going to be in contention. He's going to get first jump on Cody's wish, most likely. So he's tactical yep. enough to just sit off, which I I'll sit off what I think is a decent amount of speed. So if he gets first run and he's, you know, he's, he's got the stuff throwing through his blood like we expect him to, then he could run away and maybe Cody's wish doesn't get to him. That's the only, that's the reason. Um, Paul. I, I, here's the thing about this race, right? If Cody's wish is going to get beat, you'd figure, I don't, I don't know if you feel this way, but I do in general, you would think it'd be by a speed horse. Cause no one's going to outclose Cody's wish. But if Cody gets in some traffic trouble, I think Zandon by far is the horse you want coming from the clouds to win this race other than Cody's wish. Yeah. I, I think, I think if he gets beat, it's a horse, not necessarily a, a speed horse going wire to wire, it's someone sitting second or third takes the lead, and as you said, he doesn't he doesn't quite get there for for whatever circumstance. Um, uh, you know, I I, I I'm a sucker for Zan, and I was waiting for Pete to say he just never gets there, which is very accurate. He never gets there, uh, but I keep playing him. I will say this: I do think a one turn mile is a good configuration for Zan. I'll tell you what I, I think. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Pete. No, I agree. That was it. I agree with the one turn. I think that's his best game. Guys, I think this horse is the one that really wants the one turn mile. I have lost with this horse the last two times, I will readily admit. Um, and he's not been great. I firmly believe I've seen almost every one of these horses starts. If you guys recall, this was like my early derby pick last spring. Um, I thought he was very interesting. Um, the derby was way too much for him. This horse does not want turns. He does not act well on turns. He's a big tap it. I think this mile uh, at Belmont is going to be perfect for him. He ran a huge number in the Dwyer, and I had him like everyone had him. And he was, whatever, 60 cents the dollar. It was a weak field, and he just like completely freaked. I think that ra- that one race makes people think he's got, you know, that he might be, that, that he's that good. I think he's a little bit overrated, guys, because of that race, because he really hasn't replicated it. But that being said, I think this is a very interesting horse who I think will get a great chip right off the pace. Final thoughts on Charge It, either one of you, as, as potential. See just underneath, or could he actually win this race, guys? Sure. I think I mean, he could I think win. I get him as a C, but I think he can win. Same. I don't think he will Same. win. But I, I thought the, the Gulfstream – Park the the Gulfstream Park Mile was disappointing. I mean, regardless of what you think about the configuration, I, I just thought losing to oh, endorse. He's Absolutely. supposed to beat that. He's supposed to beat that field. Yeah. I, I don't care. And it's not like he had trouble trip really or anything. I just think that wasn't a good field. I thought he should have beat it. Even the Oakland Handicap, I think that's too far for him. But again, they're they're not the greatest horses in the world. If this horse is going to be supposed to be what everybody keeps thinking he was going to be. Eventually, he's got to win one, but he could get away for sure. I mean, maybe he just loves Belmont, and if he does. Yeah, it's just such a damn tough spot. We didn't even talk about Slow Down Andy, who ran a big race last year. Um, th- this is – it's a great race. And, and again, Tabo, whatever. Go go have fun out in California. And other I like Doppelganger a little bit, potentially to hit the board, but he does need to move his fig- – right. from a figure standpoint, he's below. But if there is a ton of speed up front, maybe he clunks up and hits like the right. bottom of the try or bottom of the super at a huge number. Uh, the penultimate race, guys, uh, uh, of the sequence. And we're going to talk about this race for about 10 minutes, then bring on Jim Miller to have an extended conversation about the Belmont. 
So we got about 10 minutes, guys. This is the Manhattan. It's a grade one. Last year, won by Tribuvan, who upset the field, wiring the field. Did not make me happy because I didn't have him, but congratulations to Tribuvan last year. It's a mile and a quarter. Um, it's a, a pretty nice field here of 10. The more line favorite is number eight, up to the mark, Pletcher and Irad. And wow, this horse run well uh, at Churchill Downs a month ago. But I have to say, guys, right off the top, before we get to our picks, that was not the strongest rendition of that uh, turf race on Derby Day. In fact, I think it was one of the weaker ones. That being said, he absolutely blew by the field and won. Paul, let's talk about your top choice first. You're going with number four, Ottoman Fleet. A one of two for Appleby and William Buick. Won the Fort Marcy last year, coming up the or last uh, time, coming up the rail, doing it very well. Uh, what do you like about uh, Ottoman Fleet? Well, you know, Howard, I looked at the eight. You know, we saw the race. He was very, very impressive. Then I looked at the chart, and, and you know, you, you took the words out of my mouth. Um, it wasn't that good a field. Now, the race before was that very good race. You know, he ran third with that Shea Pierre Morden Games race, and, up, and, and he ran yeah. third. Um, I just looked at it like this. It's a turf race. <laughs> there are two good Euros trained by Appleby in the race. One of them's going to win. Let's not get cute, I didn't, right? Just... I didn't. And I know, you know, he's not dominating U.S. racing like he was last year. But, you know, last year he was winning at like 70% of some ridiculous number. Yeah. You know, um, Godolphin owns both horses. Buick is on this one, which you would presume he has his pick of, of the Godolphin Appleby lot. I, honestly, I came down. If if I think you can beat one of them, I don't think you're beating both of them. And I went with the one of them that I thought had the better chance, and that's Ottoman Fleet. How much do you take into account that Buick is on this one and uh, Mullen is on the three? Does that matter too much, uh, Paul? Well, as I, I just said, yeah, I, I think you know, I think Buick has is you know, right or wrong, he's he's going to be on the one they think has the better chance. I mean, yeah. he has ridden Warren Point in the past. And he has ridden uh, Ottoman Fleet. He re yep. rode them both two races back. Um, you know, Detori had an interesting ride on Warren Point last time uh, where he, yeah. he didn't really break. And I, I don't know. I, I mean, on paper, it certainly looked like a, a premature move. On the track, it definitely looked like a premature <laughs> move. Um, yeah, Greg, because you know, he's got a, blind, good. He got a blindfold on Paul in the gate. They, they blindfold his horse. Um, I, I'm assuming they're gonna do it again, but uh, it's sort of weird. Watch that with Warren Point, they actually put a blindfold on him and then they take it off right when the gates spring. But yeah, that was a, a wide, uncovered, not good trip for Warren Point. I don't think he's impossible here, guys. I really don't. No, not at all. Um, there's anything else you want to add, Paul, before we go to Pete's uh, top choice here? No, no, I just think uh, you know, I think the eight's gonna be tough to beat, but I think one of the Godolphins gets him. Uh, Pete, up to the mark, like I said, we, we, Paul and I saw him in person uh, last time at, uh, on Derby weekend. I mean, he just blew by that field. Um, I thought he could win the race. I didn't think he was going to be that good. He, he was very good in that race. Yeah, I loved that horse last week. He was probably my best bet of the day on that day. And Beautiful. He, he's just – uh, he <laughs> Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't bad, especially against a field that I thought he sort of laid over a bit. But – since they put this horse on the turf, I mean, you look just from a, if we want to just stick to a buyer standpoint, 93, 93, 99, 103. We always talk about it on here. We love the improvement. I just think this horse is excellent. I mean, it's got Irad. He's just, he looked so good. He could have beat that. He was better than that field, but he beat the field like he was better than them, which is what you want. You don't want a horse who looks like they're better than the field and then they struggle a bit. I think this horse just might be coming to his own and, and could be the, you know, could eventually be our top, the top U.S. turf horse. And the Applebee's are good. They're always tough. Applebee's only three for 11 at Belmont. He's not as dominant at Belmont as he is yeah. in some of the other races. Sorry, and the four. Trying to Machimura, Machimura mentioned in the chat, Ottoman Fleet had a pretty perfect trip closing into a pretty a hot pace in, in that race last time. Warren's point, if you even look at just the time forms overseas, he was never, he always seemed like he was maybe a little bit of a notch below, 
and that maybe showed, even though he got a crappy, he didn't get the best ride in the Man of War, maybe he's just a notch below some of these other ones. So I'm going to stick with up to the mark. And by the way, uh, I rad and Pletcher on the turf, graded stakes on the turf, 42% wins, 74% in the money. So you team those two up on the turf and it's, it's money in the bank usually. No, I mean, he's, I'm, I'm having some issues with the PPs. Um, the field is my main, con- and the distance, Pete, he's never gone a mile and a quarter and he's facing proper, uh, you know, uh, I've got to get the distance, 10 furlong horses in this race. I thought that field last time, there, there were a lot of milers and look, I, up to the mark can win. And I have I respect him a lot. He's just the kind of horse at eight to five morning line that, that I'm going to try to beat Pete. It, while I'm saying that, no, I wouldn't. Yeah, I wouldn't bet him to win, but I, 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 I yeah, no, I, I, I don't think I'd bet him to win at that price. Not against two Applebee's. That's tough, but yeah, I just think he's the best horse in the race, and and I think ultimately, I think the best horse is going to win it. Uh, he he very well may. Um, you guys have some other horses also. Um, it's not just four eight. Uh, Pete, you want to mention the six, uh, and, and then I'll talk about uh, actually. Then we'll just move on. I always like Red Knight. That's a good horse, by yep. the way. Yeah, he's 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 you solid. Like Red. He, yep, yep. I I couldn't believe I didn't have him as an A last time. I was so pissed when he when he won the Man of War. It, I think that might have cost me the pick five. So that was stupid for a horse I love. Maker, by the way, three for forty in graded stakes races on the Belmont turf. So he bucked it last time, but that's a tough percentage if you if you care about that. Um. Yeah. Let me. Sorry. Bring up. There we go. Um. I'll tell you, this is an overachiever, Paul. I mean, the source is good. I don't know if he's good enough to win this race, but you know he's always going to run his race. I mean, you got to love an honest horse. He's nine, Paul. It's amazing. Yeah, he, he 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 is not able to run in New York after this year. You cannot run past age nine. Yeah, this is you know a homebred uh, a homebred New York bred who's earned one point seven million dollars. We've talked about it before. Uh, you know, when he went on the shelf. Uh, back in the end of uh, August 2021, 20, they were going to retire him, and he just started acting like a racehorse again. And that's when they gave him to Maker, who specializes in these old turf marathoners. And yeah, Pete said it. You know, he shows up every time. Um, I have him as a C here. Um, I, I don't think he's a likely winner, but I'm, you know, I'm not going to be surprised when he wins. And Suspect I'll be writing about him if he does. Guys, I have a weird feeling that Soldier Rising is going to run a big race. This this horse is going to win a big race when we least expect it. I don't know if the distance suits. I don't know if there's enough early speed. But he, you know he's going to make a run. He's getting some weight from some others. I sure as hell do not want Clement to beat me at 10, 12 to 1. But I was going to be. I'm using him, guys. Any thoughts on Soldier Rising? I I could see. Okay, I don't have him. I'm going to make him a C, Uncle, based on your recommendation. Okay, Pete. Yeah, I, 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 I would. I would. I no. I would. I I think you. He's one you would play like in a triple. But I wouldn't put him on. I wouldn't put him on. Uh, I wouldn't probably put him on my pick five ticket against this field. I don't think okay. he would. I don't like him as a win contender. But I, I wouldn't shock me if, and by any stretch if he ran up to third or if you're playing a super third or fourth. Yeah. And Rock Emperors run some big races, guys. I don't know. I I, I hate that horse. I never. I, that horse always seems to screw you. When, <laughs> wow, when, hey, when that's you a don't want him. Oh, I hate that horse. Yeah, I, I, I'll be so pissed if he wins. Wow. Okay. Um, it, this race might be as simple as the Euros are up to the mark, but I don't know. It's not as if the two Euros and up to the mark like blow me away. I don't. I'm spreading. We'll show up the pick five. I can very simple. The four and the eight are definitely two top horses. And if you just go four eight, I totally get it. I just I don't know, um, guys. It is about that time. Very excited to talk about the Belmont Stakes, the fiftieth anniversary of Secretariat's win. Uh, Paul, as I bring up the entries, and also actually before, there is Secretary shirt. Actually, before I bring up the entries, uh, Paul, let's bring in our wonderful guest. Um, I, I, we should might as well just call him a co-host at this point. Uh, joining us every Thursday from Hawthorne Park, the director of racing at Hawthorne Park, Mr. Jim Miller. Jim, happy about Mod Six weekend. How you doing, sir? Uh, great, because I like Rock Emperor to win. So now I'm even wow. better. So this is awesome. <laughs> well, well, the one, I give me fifteen, it. give me twenty. This is fantastic. 
Well, it, trust me, every time I leave him <laughs> off the ticket, he winds up winning. So you got a good shot there, Jim. I'm playing him, actually, so that's pretty awesome. I love it. Hey, Jim, before hey, we... Jim, I, want, I want you to know, Jim, that with no action today, my friend Bob and I here from our hotel room in Garden City, yep. we're contributing to the Hawthorne handle today. So. I, can t- I can tell you this, guys, and this was the coolest thing about it. I'm friends with Eric Hallstrom, who's the GM over at Horseshoe Indianapolis. And we basically talked and coordinated and said... Okay, when one track goes official, the other track is riders up going on the track and vice versa. We just staggered all day long. We only had seven races, guys, and did almost 2.2 million in handles. So that's wow. a big day for us. Awesome. Uh, and I'll tell you, it was good Real turf team. racing. You had a couple of Wesley Ward horses in the turf sprint and Owen Hardy in a nice allowance race. But, uh, yeah, there wasn't a whole lot out there. And teamwork makes the dream work. The two tracks staggered and worked really well together. So it was a very good day for us. So thank yep. you. And thank you for – your support, and uh, hopefully you made some money there uh, too, Paul. What a concept, not running races at the same time against Amazing. each other. Did like New York and Churchill do it the other day, Howard? Sunday, was it Sunday after? Paul, I, I just want to scream. Let's not get started in this. I'm in way too good a mood. It's oh. just ridiculous. <laughs> um, all right, Jim, um, before we talk, Paul, well, we're going to go to Jim first. Uh, Jim, before you actually do it, I'm going to have you talk about this pick five in general and any thoughts you have like as a whole. Uh, and then Paul, I'd like you to speak of a very special occasion that's going to be happening relating to secretariat that you're going to be indirectly involved in this weekend. I think you know what I'm talking about. So Jim, your overall thoughts on the, cause you're not going to give us a pick five ticket, but your overall right. thoughts on these five consecutive grade one races at Belmont. I mean, it's an awesome card. It is. It really is. I actually think there's potential for some upsets in some of the races, which I know it's going to make Paul a little upset. I'm I'm going to try to beat Cody's wish. Um, it's one of those. I, 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 I think we're losing Jim's reception. Yeah, I, I, it's, it's one of those things. I mean, Rock Emperor is going to be on my ticket. I, I think there's the potential for some prices in the Belmont. And you look at sequences like this, and here's the thing. When it's a bunch of grade ones, it's almost a little bit like what you see on Breeders' Cup Day where really good horses go off at 8, 10, 12 to 1. So I guess that's the one thing that I would say about the sequence. There's potential for a huge score if you can just beat one or two favorites along the sequence. And I think there are some favorites that can be beaten. I'm not saying Cody's wish will be beaten. I'm just saying for me, I will at least include a couple other horses in that race as well on my ticket. Oh, I think you have to, Jim. I'm I'm going to whisper this, but I'm using some C's in that race just in case Cody doesn't win. (laughs) Uh, it, it, oh, anything can happen. You never know. I mean, no, no. Uh, why not? I mean, he's not infallible. I mean, he I, is Cody's wish, but he's not. You know, he's not. And he's going to be four to five being the money. So that's yeah. the thing. Just so you got, you have to look for value when you're playing some of these. Oh, Jim, Jim, let me tell you, Jim. If he's even money, I'm going to do something very <laughs> irrational. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> love it. Where well, do I sign, Paul? Um, speaking of signing, someone signed a letter. 50 years ago oh, plus. Yes. Can you please yes. talk about I want I don't, I don't know if I can be there for this meeting. Paul, you and I have to talk. I'd love to actually be there just to feel the experience of it. Please explain to everyone what we're talking about, then we'll get into the race on Saturday. Yeah, so just briefly, after the Churchill race, um, you know, like every stakes race, they brought the connections into the ship for a champagne toast. And I was with the Dormans, and a nice woman said to me, Oh, geez, I'd love to meet the Dormans. And, you know, I told her what I was doing there, which was kind of covering the races and kind of working on my book. So I introduced myself to her and uh, she says, oh, I'm Kate Shenery. So, of course, it's Penny Shenery Tweedy's daughter, Kate, and which really, after Cody's wish, made the weekend for me because I'm a secretary at nut, as you can see from my wrist and my shirt. (laughs) So. Our good friend, Dr. Jeff Mora, who may or may not be in the chat, he might be packing. He's flying up tomorrow. He was a secretary at Lunatic, wrote a, a, a note to Penny Shannery 55 years ago, professing his love for secretariat. She wrote a note back to him. He has the letter. And as long as the jackass can find it, because he was <laughs> looking for it, he's doing his house over. He is bringing the letter to Belmont Saturday to show Kate Shannery the letter that was sent to her mother 50 years ago. How's that? That's cool. That's really cool. That's Very awesome. Cool. Uh, Paul, I hate to say this, but you know, the first 5,000 people into Belmont on Saturday gets a free replica program 
fit from 50 years ago. And Paul, if I go to your car at the end of the races Saturday and look at the trunk and I see 4,999 of them, you and I are going to have issues, man. <laughs> I will tell you this, even though I'll have no issue getting them, typically on Belmont Day, Howard, if that promotion were for the first five people, I would get one. We, we tend to go early. Yeah, well, I'll be going early. Uh, by the way, Andy Serling, guys, said that's the best uh, giveaway he's ever seen in New York track in his time. Oh, in I love it. He's I been love there it. a long time. And, Jim, you know about giveaways and, you know, minor league baseball tries to do a lot of goofy things. Uh, a, a replica program from 50 years yeah. ago, that is cool. Yeah, that's very cool. I mean, the biggest thing that ever went over for us was always the bobbleheads. It seemed like jockey bobbleheads were super cool. But, come on, this is this is 50 years of the greatest racehorse ever to set foot on the racetrack. So, nice. it's very cool to see. It's an awesome giveaway. I'm glad they're doing it. And uh, I'll tell you, they should have a good crowd because I think this is actually a really good race for the Belmont this year, too. Yeah. Let, let's get on to the Belmont, guys. We've talked a lot. Um, here are our picks on the bottom of the screen. Let's see here. We've got some variety. Jim and I – have the same three horses in different order. Um, Paul is actually quite different than everyone. This is a really good race, guys. Let's go ahead and take a look at the entries for this year's Belmont Stakes 2023 presented by Naira Betts. It is a grade one, of course, $1.5 million, a mile and a half, which is, of course, Two turns on Big Sandy. It is a field of nine. The morning line favorite is sort of a soft morning line favorite. The number six, Forte, the two-year-old champion. We all know what happened, uh, Churchill Downs at, at the Kentucky Derby where he didn't have a chance to run. He's been off for a while. I think he's very polarizing in this race, as is National Treasure. I have very strong opinions in this race. I'm guessing you guys do as well. Jim, we're going to go to you first uh, as our uh, person who just came on here. Jim, you are going 8-7-2. You're going with Angel of Empire. That was Pete's top pick in the, uh, uh, in the uh, Kentucky Derby. Uh, it's also Pete's pick here. Uh, he's putting blinkers on. Um, I'm sure you've read the information about it, Jim, so I'm not going to tell you, but you need to explain the blinkers on situation because – he has worn them before, so but just not in a race. I'll let you right. expound on that. This is a very good Pennsylvania bread for Brad Cox. Here's the thing that's interesting, and it's funny because I just saw somebody comment saying that Tapatrice should be the favorite. I actually thought that that wasn't a very good line on Tapatrice. I thought Angel of Empire was going to be a shorter price than Tapatrice in this race. So mm. we'll see how things unfold in here. Um, blinkers, a lot of people always say blinkers equates to speed. It doesn't really equate to speed. It, it equates to focus for a racehorse. They're trying to keep a little bit more focus in a racehorse, try to finish a little bit more in that. And that's something I, I think is more the reason why you see blinkers on Angel of Empire. Here's the quirky thing about this race for me, guys. All right, I like National Treasure in the Preakness. I don't like National Treasure here, only for the fact that I think he kind of has to go to win. But I tend to wonder... If El, El Maricolo, that they're in there just to kind of keep that pace honest, and they're going to try to go, and that could be the horse that completely throws a loop for the entire race. So because of that is the reason why I did go to Angel of Empire. I think there will be enough pace in this race. I like the fact that the horse was running on in the Derby and is progressing speed figure-wise and seems to be improving to me each and every start out. I thought there was a good effort there back in the Risen Star. I thought it was a better effort in the Arkansas Derby, and I thought it was a legitimate race in the Kentucky Derby. You see the buyer of 104? Look up and down this field here. Nobody else is running 104 in this race. And to get back to anything close to that, I think Angel of Empire is the best horse in the field. Well, and, of course, there's no two fills. There's no mage in this right. race. Uh, you do obviously have Forte coming back at National Treasure. I can make the argument, even though I don't have – Angel of Empire on top, that this is the most likely winner of the race because of his consistency and um, he's he, he's very solid. Now, Jim, the one thing that I want to ask you about, and Pete, you can expound on this next. Closers don't usually win the Belmont. It's a fallacy. We've talked about this a million yeah. times. Everyone who understands handicapping the Belmont knows this. A closer can win, but not too often. How far back Will Angel Vampire be? How far back do you want Pratt to have him? Is it completely dependent on pace, etc.? Um, 
I think he runs the race he ran in the Arkansas Derby if he wants to win. You have to stay within five lengths of the leaders early on. And if that's the case and the horse has the ability to do so, then I think they have that shot to win. I mean, you, you the, the pace was so quick in the Derby, and, and some expected it, some didn't. I kind of thought it was going to be a quick pace, and that's the reason they were so far back. But the pace shouldn't be that quick up front because if National Treasure wants to win, they're going to have to try to back it down, and we'll see if anybody else goes. But I think Angel of Empire, you probably have to sit within five lengths of those early leaders and then just kind of try to grind it out that last half mile more than anything. Uh, Pete, Jim mentioned Il Miracolo's speed, uh, supposedly, and, and you never you never the hell know. Supposedly, Tapachus is going from the inside. That's what Cox said. Based on the early time for him, he does have speed. He's improving. I think Jose is dead sending. I have a weird feeling this horse might be even be, be on the lead at the first turn. Yeah, no, I agree. I, I think... I think that's why he's probably in here. I mean, I don't know if he has a shot to win the race, but I think he's in here and, and luckily he drew the rail. So now he can just send and, and there's no question about it. He's not going to get hung. He's not going to have any trouble sending. As long as he breaks from the gate, I think he goes, I think Il Maricolo goes because what else is he going to do? He's right. not going to, he's not going to outclose these other horses. So he has to go. And, and I don't think national treasure wants to get into like, like Jim said, I don't think he wants to get out there and cut, crazy fractions he wants to run comfortably around the track like he did in the preakness and i just don't think that's going to happen here um i agree with you and just anything else you want to talk about angel of empire Pete? i know you've been high in the source for a long time no jim pretty much said everything i i agree with him about the one thing is we always say closers don't win the belmont and that's true you don't want to be closing in the lane but Angel of Empire has that ability to make up ground. And you see at the top of the lane, he's never far off. I mean, he's, you see, second, third, half. He's, he's got the lead yeah. in the Arkansas Derby, even in the Kentucky Derby with being so far back. Basically, Mage just beat him to all the spots, and that's yeah. why Mage was ahead of him, and, and, he, and he couldn't catch him. But I think mm-hmm. Angel of Empire did everything, almost everything right in that race. And I think if he does that here, I'm a Forte guy. I think Forte is the best horse in the race. I would have him on top most likely if, you know, he's just had a couple hiccups. He's been off for a while. That hasn't been the best trend in this race, but I do think Forte is the best horse. And I think if Forte shows up and runs his best race, I think he beats them all. So. Yeah. He, I mean, you have to respect the horse. He's done absolutely nothing wrong in his career. Just the only thing that's gone wrong in his career, Pete, is the last two months. That's Literally, what I mean. And it's the worst time. How bad it's really been. Right. I mean, there's speculation. I mean, that, Rapoli won. <clears throat> let me let me go to Forte since we're talking about him. Rapoli's and Pletcher won to run in, in the Derby. I mean, who am I or any of us really do question Pletcher? Uh, you know, think the horse is ready. He has shown. He, so he had a little weird hiccup during Derby Week, which apparently affected you know the reason why he got hurt a little bit. And then he did have a little like weird trip or stumble. It's very weird. Mm-hmm. I don't take much account or much stock in it. But it is worth mentioning, he, things have been a little bit weird for him lately, Pete. Well, and it's it's also, you, you you wonder, too, if it's just like everybody's just watching every little thing that he does, too. Yeah. So And and everybody wants him to. So he's definitely had, he's like the negative horse, and he's for no reason. I mean, it wasn't his fault. He scratched. He wanted to run in the, pre, they wanted to run him in the Preakness. He was ready to run in the Preakness and couldn't because of the timing and the rules and such. So, People are just hating this horse, I think, because he was going into the Derby as the favorite and he ran a 95 buyer and everybody thought that was terrible. And then Mage comes out of that race and and wins the Derby. And he he ran by Mage like he was standing still in the Florida Derby. So I I just think he takes a lot of unnecessary hate. And I hope that at the windows they do that as well. And that price floats up Uh, before we go to Paul, uh, Pete or Jim, who is the favorite uh, come post time? Oh, Forte should be the favorite. No, 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 not who should. Who I, will think for, I think Forte will be the favorite. Um, okay. I think Angel of Empire will be the second choice, though. Uh, okay. But you can't knock the fact that Forte was going to be the favorite and a clear favorite in the Kentucky Derby. And it's Todd Pletcher in New York, and it's a horse that is undefeated and a champion in that. Um, I was actually a little surprised to see 5-2. to two. I thought the horse was going to be somewhere around 2-1, to 9-5 to five in okay. this field. And you have nowhere, and Paul has nowhere. How about that? Uh, so let's, let's go to our good friend, Paul Haller. Paul? This is the kind of race where things can happen. And I'll tell you one thing that I am going to make sure I do from this point forward. And the mage win has convinced me more than anything. I've got to stop thinking old school with these triple con races and thinking a horse is 
too raw or doesn't have enough starts or can't win. I, I've gotten rid of that attitude a bit, but after Mage won, um, I, I believe Archangel can win. This is a horse that I usually would not think could win at all, just because he only has certain amount of lifetime starts. He only has one big number. But you know what? There's no superstars in this race. I love this. I don't have him in the top three, but I love your selection, Paul. I really well, do. You know, I started off talking about the Woody Stevens and, and you know, the race being kind of a referendum on the Pat Day Mile. I think this is a referendum on the Derby. And you know what? In fairness to Jim, his guy, two fills, ran the best race, and he ain't in here. Yep. Um, Tappet Trice, who we've talked about till people are sick of us, and I don't blame them. Let, let's just be clear about Tappet Trice's derby effort. It was awful, okay? It wasn't bad. It was awful. He was right with Mage early in the race, okay? He ran awful. National Treasure didn't run in the derby. Once first mission scratched, it was somewhat of a base on balls in the Preakness. Forte, according to our good friend Ed DeRosa Howard, horses with layoffs of more than 37 days are 0 for 16 in this race in the last 29 years. Hit Show probably ran the best of this group in the Derby, or as good as Angel of Empire. I guess I could see him. I have him as a C. Angel of Empire, I hear you, Pete. He can make ground up on the turn, but he, he is pretty much a closer, and, and I don't like the profile. So having said all of that, I can find a reason not to bet every one of the logicals. So I'm going with Jenna Antonucci, and wouldn't I love – wouldn't we – well, I would. You know, I'd love to see a, a low-profile New York trainer like Jenna win this race. There you go. Well, and you, you talked about a, a lot about the other horses, Paul, and why they can't win. Let's talk a little bit about why this horse can win. Yeah, He's a proving well, son of Arrogate who ran by a good horse last time. He's been training well. He's tactical. He's got a guy called Javier Castellano who's having a, a pretty good run. There's, and he's improving. And I think you can make the argument, Paul, that a lot of these horses may not be improving. Um, I think he's going to be bet a little bit, guys. I think he's going to be like 6-1 to one and sort of the wise guy uh, pick of this race. But you're still going to get a price, and you should get a good trip here, Paul. I agree, and and I agree on the last race. Um, you know, they were very high on Bishop's Bay going into that race. Brad Cox was very high on them. I watched that race closely today before I made this selection. Uh, Javier really didn't ask him until the, after they straightened out in the stretch. Uh, he did make that move on the turn pretty much on his own. Now, look, you know, yeah, Bishop's Bay is a good horse. What else was in there? I get it. Not much. You know, he ran with Kings Bonds two races, uh, three races back. Yeah. As I say, th this is my selection is more of he's going to be. And, and I, Howard, I think he will be eight to one. And Jim, I will be almost certain that Tapa Trice is lower odds than Angel of Empire. Really? I'm almost. I would bet any amount of money on that. I, I, agree, I agree, too. Yeah. They are going right, let me, let, let, let me talk no. to someone who makes the morning lines. No, oh, wait, I, well, here, because I, I want to ask you why. Or, I mean, if you look, because just because a lot of people, there's people that play the sheets, there's people that use bris and that a lot of people use the racing form. If you look at the form, you got Angel of Empire coming out with a 10 point higher buyer than what you had out of Tappet Trice in the last race, which is the like race. And you just said you hated his race in the Derby. Why do you think right. this horse will be a shorter price? Because of Pletcher and because of the Tappet factor. You know, the Tappets win the Belmont and Pletcher wins the Belmont. And people are going to look at that derby and say, oh, well, he just got too far behind. He couldn't make it up. It, it, it's, it is as bad as it looks on paper, but they're not going to think it is. Because, I, I, again, I, 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 which would be good for you and Pete. I, I am... Virtually positive, Tappa Trice will be a lower price than Angel of Empire. All right, Howard, I, I, Howard, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something that I never do here, all right, or very rarely do. I've done it one time, all right? Howard, you know how good Lou Malnati's pizza is, right? Fantastic. Okay. If Tappa Trice goes off as a shorter price than Angel of Empire, Paul and Pete, I will each send you a Lou Malnati's pizza. Love it. Wow. Oh, oh, most, most guys eat deep dish. I don't know. Hey, 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 Paul, you might have to put that grade one gamble money down on Tappet Trice to bring those odds down. We'll, after this, so we'll see. And, all right, Jim Touche. If he doesn't, 
We'll, how about I will make a donation to the TRF in your name? Here, even, even better. All right. Even better. I am the president of the RICF, which is the Racing Industry Charitable Foundation here in you Illinois, which handles all Done. the backstretch workers. We'll Done. do that for them. Done. Good. Awesome. Oh, I, I love it. A, li a live wager right here on the HHH <laughs> podcast and all in good fun and for a good cause. Um, guys, it's my two minutes of time to talk about the Vala. Um, <laughs> in January, I made a future bet on Tabit Trice, we all know. He was not good in the Derby. When I made the bet, guys, and Paul, you have to confirm some of this because these were conversations only you and I had. I wasn't sure he could win the Derby. I thought he was interesting. But we both said, and I said many times, this is absolutely a Belmont horse. I've said this a thousand times because of his breeding, because of his stride, because of his style. He was not good in the Derby. We all know that. He's got the inside again. I know, Pete, you're going to bring that up, and it's fair to say. This race is completely different than the Derby, guys. There's not nearly as much speed. There's half as many horses. There's no reason why Saez can't get this horse in mid-pack to the outside by, you know, the end of the first turn. If he's on the outside, mid-pack, I know those are ifs, but I think it's likely, by the end of the first turn and the beginning of the backstretch, I think he's going to be very tough. And it's fair to say, people have been paying attention, he's been working unbelievably and I've yeah. seen, I, I've watched almost every work that he's had, guys. He's never worked a minute flat, like ever, down at Palm Meadows or anywhere else. He is working fantastically. This track is perfect for him. This is not a pick by my heart, guys. This is a pick by my head. I have to go with my gut feeling from five months ago. Tapatrice is my top pick, and I think he's going to run the race of his life on Saturday. I respect Angel Vampire. I've got him second. I, Jim and Pete, I think he's probably, again, like I said, the most likely winner uh, in this field for all the reasons we mentioned. And then there's Hit Show. And, and we got to talk yes, about Hit Show, Jim. Yes, a please. Bit. We're going to talk about Hit Show, Jim, then we're going to let you go. Yep. Hit Show, to me, is fascinating. It's the third of the three Brad Coxes. He ran a very underratedly good race in the Derby. He was up close. I know he lost, you know, fifth by six, but he was one of the few that stuck around. Um, I think he's going to set a great trip here. He's got tap it on the dam side, candy ride. He's improving. It's the other, other, you know, Cox. If this horse wins, I will not be surprised. I've got him on my horizontals everywhere, Jim. Here's the thing about Hit Show. Um, you, we don't know anymore who's really bred to run a mile and a half. But if anybody's going to be, Hit Show could be the horse that is that one. And all the, all the points that you made, Howard, the Derby pace was fast, 45 and three to the half, 110 for three quarters. And Hit Show, not only from the inside post of a field of 18, but also sat close the entire way. We know two fills was there at the end, but really Hit Show was the only other racehorse that was there that was part of those top five basically going on to the backside. So this is a horse that I thought ran a really legitimate race, improved. You kind of see that nice progression each and every start out. I think this is a horse that I don't know if he can win, but it's a horse that if you go out there and there's three pressing on the front end, why isn't he the one sitting right behind them and maybe gets first run on those that are going to come from a little bit out of it and do so at 10 to one. Peter, I Paul, think, final think... thoughts on hit show or anyone else we have. Well, we, let, let, sorry, let me say one more thing, guys, real quick. We, we all are successful in our betting when it happens because we have strong opinions and I'm right and wrong, just like everyone else. If National Treasury wins this race, I will be shocked. And I mean absolutely shocked. This horse is nowhere on my ticket. Someone's going to go after him. And this field is 10 times tougher than the Preakness, as you mentioned. I am completely against National Treasury. The other horse I'm against is Forte. And I love the horse and the connections. But this two-month thing and all these other things, and he's going to be the favorite, I am very much against Forte. Not as much as I am against National Treasure. But those two big names, guys, I'm completely against. I think someone else wins. Um, Pete, any final thoughts on what I just said or Hit Show or anyone else that we didn't mention? No, I mean, because I, I, I put, if, honestly, if National Treasure wasn't a Baffert horse who, and, and the fact that we sometimes see speed where we always think somebody's going to go and they don't, and then some other horse just gets on the lead and they run around. So when we get to our pick five tickets, I have National Treasure for that reason only. 
I still think Forte is the best horse in the race, but if he's not sharp, I think this is a better, is a deep field. So I think he can be beat, but I mean, I don't, I don't agree with the whole, you know, tossing him and, and, and acting like he's, I still think he's the best horse in the race. And I think if he runs his a game, he beats them. And I think he beats them comfortably hit show. I think hit shows. I, it wouldn't shock me if surprisingly if hit show was lower than Archangelo odds wise, everyone yeah. loves hit show. Every still, every show I've listened to, everyone loves hit show and it's all, and it, not that it's a bad reason, but it's all the same. So I, when you said he, everybody said he underrated, he's actually ran maybe an overrated race in the Derby at this point. Cause everyone is saying he was close and he was this, and, and I'm not, disagreeing i just think i think he's going to take money because everyone seems to love that horse uh jim i don't know who's going to be the moreland favorite i think it's going to be i think it's going to be like three to one i don't think forte is going to be like an overwhelming favorite there's just too many interesting horses in here it's going to be interesting the last thing jim before you let you go and then guys we're going to give our pick five we have ladies and gentlemen um 200 people watching just on youtube alone and many others watch. We probably close to four or five hundred people watching right now live. We cannot thank everyone enough for watching the HHH Racing Podcast tonight. If you are a new viewer, please continue to watch. And there's something else you should do. If you have not subscribed to our Power Picks, which is our tip sheet, look below the video player for all information on Patreon. It's only four bucks a weekend, sixteen bucks a month. We give ABC grids, top picks. It's about ten pages of of information for basically two bucks uh, and I'm sending it out tomorrow night. Um, but it's not just for this weekend. Please look into the power picks below the video player. We've got, we've given price shots, pick fives, etc. Jim, before we let you go and the other three of us give our pick fives, final thoughts for the viewers and listeners on the Belmont stakes or anything else in the pick five sequence, a price horse, maybe early in the sequence, the, the floor is yours for a few minutes here, Jim. I mean, aside from Rock Emperor, hopefully went in a 12 to one. No, uh, <laughs> it's one of those things. But hey, here's the thing. I really hope uh, we're not having to deal with questions about air quality and everything that's been leading up over the course of this last week. And we just get to talk about horse racing and focus on horse racing because it is. It's a really good card from top to bottom. Solid race horses, solid fields. You have a mix of everything. The, the coolest thing about the Belmont card is you see a three-year-old race at a mile and a half, which you very rarely see. You see really good sprint races. You see the mile. You see really good turf races going different distances. This is the closest card, like I mentioned, guys, that you get to the Breeders' Cup until you get to the Breeders' Cup. So it's a great day of racing. Definitely worth checking out. Like I said, when you get a bunch of grade one races, you get a bunch of stakes horses. Sometimes you find stakes horses that are very good race horses at 10 to 1 or higher. Absolutely. Uh, Jim Miller, really appreciate you coming on, talking Belmont. Hawthorne is running Sunday, of course. We made an executive decision. Even Jim. That's uh, a good decision. Bless the Belmont stakes. We'll get back to Hawthorne's pick four next week. And also, quick mention, contest coming up um, at Hawthorne, Jim. Yeah, June 24th and June 25th, five NHC seats on the line. It's $500 live bankroll. And we talk live bankroll. You can focus on whatever circuit you want to focus on. So that's the thing. You can play multi-race wagers on a circuit. If you're a New York player, California, Florida, we don't say you have to only pick certain races. Now, we do do it at six of our off-track betting locations, but we give away so many NHC seats, and you get to keep what you make. So even if you have a good day and are not good enough to get one of those NHC seats and you still turn 500 to say into a couple thousand dollars, you're going home with a couple thousand dollars. So something to definitely check out. It's a real money live bankroll tournament. No entry fee either, guys. So that's the thing too. And uh, if you have any questions, just check out the website at hawthornracecourse.com. You do have to be at an actually at the OTB yep. in Chicago. So make a trip up to Chicago. There's also a great uh, tournament called the Hawthorne Invite that Jim will talk about next week that yours truly will be involved in. Thanks for uh, inviting me once again. Jim Miller, good luck this weekend, man. Take care. You got it, guys. Good luck. Go Angel of Empire, shorter than Tap at Trice. <laughs> I like Take that care, pizza, Jim. Jim. Can't yeah, wait for that pizza, there baby. you go. Take care, guys. <laughs> Bye, Jim. See you, Jim. All right, guys. Don't go anywhere. We got our pick five. So we're going to very quickly give – everyone on the screen here is going to give our pick five. Now, as the uh, host, creator, whatever, uh, Grand Poobah, whatever you want to – knucklehead, whatever you want to call me of this podcast – Listen, it's Belmont Stakes weekend. I had to give these guys a bigger budget. I said, you know what? You can go up to $200. We doubled it. So we're going to show some big pick five tickets. If you can't afford these tickets, call some friends, right, Pete and Paul? This is a great weekend to get four or five people together. Everyone throws in 30 bucks, whatever, because you really have to spread in a lot of these races. 
We all know we're ABC players. If you don't know what that is, go to our power pick section of our, um, of our um, website, website that Pete has developed or look below the video player or look at, I put together an ABC video. It's just a way to structure tickets. Anyway, we're giving just caveman straight tickets. Uh, we're going to go to Paul first, I believe. Paul, Paul's, uh, yep, all stakes, all grade one, ending in the Belmont stakes, pick five on Saturday is the following. He is going 3, 4, 8, 13 with 5, 10, 11, 12 with 1, with 3, 4, 8, with 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8. It's a $144 ticket singling Cody's wish. Paul, hit it. Yeah, I had a very strong opinion in the Belmont, as you can see, Howard. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, in a caveman situation, I would be doing that. Uh, you know, uh, starting at the beginning, I did take the, the, the two out of the uh, – the two out of the Pate Mile. Uh, I like Arabian Lion, and I had to throw in the undefeated Drew's Gold. Uh, we talked about him a little bit. I actually like him less the more I look at the race, but he is undefeated. I think the Jiper, in my opinion, even though I'm six deep in the Belmont, I think the Jiper is the toughest race in the sequence, so hence my four deep there. I did single Cody's Wish. Um the Manhattan, I went with the three horses I talked about, which were the, the two Applebee's and the favorite out of the Churchill, and then pretty much used anyone who could stand up in the uh, in the Belmont. If I could ever get a live, I could probably get a live to six feet and not hit it, right? I mean, that's that's easy that that who's going to tap its shoes is just going to or, or take yeah. them around the track, obviously. Yeah. The red right. route one is going to come flying. Red route one. Well, that, especially that's that's his horse. So that would really stick in his craw because that was his horse yeah. the whole early derby season. All right. Let's go to Pete's pick. I, I like the ticket, Paul. It's well constructed. Let's go to Pete's excellent ticket. He has no singles. He's spending 180. 1, 3, 4, 8, 12, 13. With 5, 10, 11. With 1, 7. With 4, 8. With 2, 3, 4, 6, 8. $180, Pete. Yeah, I'm going with everybody almost in the first leg that I talked about. A little bit of the speed, a little bit of closers, a little bit of mid-pack. Have a little bit of everybody in there. Second leg, I toss in, toss in Caravel and trying to beat her. And that would be the one where hopefully she gets bet down. And this is the one I think there's enough speed in there. So I'm going basically with off the pace horses in that race. I, I was going to single Cody's wish, but Repo Rocks just scares me if he freaks like he's been known to do. So I threw him on the ticket here in my ABC grid. Just for the record, I think I have Cody's wish as an A, lone A, Repo Rocks as a lone B, and then a few horses underneath then I taught, I went with one Appleby, one up to the mark. I still think up to the mark is the best horse in the race. And then in the Derby, I mean, in the Belmont, sorry, apologies. I went with all the logicals. And again, even though I'm with you, I don't love national treasure. I would hate to lose this pick five when that horse just gets on the lead and runs around the track. So for the purposes of this ticket, I put national treasure on there. The only one I left off that's a little bit logical is, is hit show. Uh, hey, Paul, Paul, both of us can, we could both hit, which is nice. So looking at our tickets there, we, we can both hit. So that's, that's a positive in my book. Hey, pick five, Brian. I see your comment just came up. Share it on the screen. I'll show pick five, Brian. I mean, your name is pick five, Brian. So Brian, we have to show your pick five. So Brian, if you, uh, you can hear me, I'm sure you can go ahead and type that in. We it's have up so there. It's up there a little bit already, by the way, he put his ticket up. Oh, he, uh, did he put it before? I don't see it right now. Yeah, it's about seven seven comments back. Okay, his actual ticket? All right, I'll... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll go ahead. There's a delay again. I'll, I'll find it after. Okay. I uh, we have somebody, Pete, you've been a host before. So oh, yeah, this, yeah the comments, comments, they get lost. Yeah, I love the yeah. show. But the banter, by the way, the, the live chat's been awesome. All right, guys, here we go. If you're a fan of my picks and you... Uh, agree with me, then be ready to write something down. If not, then I guess you can ignore the next two minutes. Here's my pick five. I'm spending $150. I'm going three, four, seven, eight, 12, 13. With three, eight, 10, 11, 12. With one. With three, four, five, six, seven, eight. With two, eight. It's $150. I think, guys, on every time you bet a pick five, you have to decide. Where do you want to take your stands? Where do you want to spread, right? Depending on the uh, PPs, the type of race it is. Here's my feeling, guys. Cody's wish to me is the most likely winner of the entire of the entire weekend, practically. 
um, other than in Italian. Those two are the most likely winners the entire weekend. Um, it's a tough race. I believe in Cody. I have to single on this type of ticket. I hear what you guys are saying on the Belmont. I could be completely wrong. I love some of the picks you guys have. I'm totally against National Treasure. I'm totally against Forte. Sure, Archangelo can win, I suppose, right? I mean, things can happen. I really like Tapa Trace, and I really like Angel of Empire in this race. And I just, I wouldn't be surprised if they lost, but I feel very strongly one of those two is going to win the race. The other ones are spreads. We didn't even talk about the seven in the first leg, who is a very nice horse, who I think is not possible in the Woody Stevens. Guys, the the, the Manhattan, yeah, it's probably going to be four or eight, but I don't know. I mean, there's no bricks or mortars in here. There's no, like, superstars. I think something weird could happen. It's a mile and a quarter turf race. I'm going to spread a little bit there, too. My strongest opinions, guys, is Cody's going to win and Angel or um, Tapa Trice can win the Belmont, and then everything else, just throw your hands in the air. I think it's a spread. Paul Halloran, you got a final thought. No, I just wanted to ask a question of uh, the math teacher, Mr. Kravitz. Did Mr. I make Kravitz, a mistake? You said, you said your ticket's 150, Mr. Kravitz. Oh, boy. I think it's 180. Oh, boy. Did I really? On Belmont, I'm on just, Belmont I'm just State. asking uh, a question, Mr. Kravitz. I need oh, extra help. Lord. Did I make that mistake? It's very possible. What is it? Six by five, right? 30 by, is it six? Oh, it is 180. Gosh darn it. Uh, nice, nice catch. Do I get extra credit? Do we get America? extra credit, Mr. Kravitz? All right, you got extra credit. There it is, 180. Thank you, Paul Halloran. Guys, um, again, bottom of the screen, we've got a great show. Watch our review show Monday at eight o'clock that talks about uh, recap shows. Sorry, not re well, recap and review. Um, guys, I am. I don't like to use the word stoked, but I am so excited not only about this weekend. But about the viewership tonight, Pete and Paul, we are our, our viewers and new people came out in droves. We have a nice following. It's getting bigger all the time. Again, thank you very much. Please hit that subscribe button. If you haven't, please sign up for the power picks through Patreon. Look below the video player. Um, hit that notification bell. Hit the like button. Pete and Paul, you have the last word for this weekend. The, the thing you're looking forward to the most or one last final thought for the entire weekend. Pete Visco, you're up first. No, it's just a great, excited, like everybody. This is a fantastic weekend. I'm glad the the, the weather's coming around, so, or the, the air quality. That, that's the term that we've never used so much in a two-day span. Glad everything is ready and set to go. I mean, you can't beat the two days. There's a great field. There's great fields tomorrow, so don't don't sleep on it. Tomorrow's tomorrow's got some excellent races. You know our girl in Italian is going, so we got to watch yeah. her. Not the best race in the world, but great weekend, great race. I hope you guys have a great time while you're there and cash a ton of tickets for us. No, no more, no more Indianapolis tonight, Paul. Let's, let's get to the good stuff tomorrow. Yeah, for sure. I know Sylvain, you want to know my best bet of the weekend. I love, I love Gilmore on Saturday. That's probably my favorite play of the weekend along with search results, search results and Gilmore, my two favorite plays the entire weekend. Plus a horse that was supposed to run today, but is going to run Sunday in the second to last race in the wonder again, I will tweet that out on Sunday because I love a horse running Sunday in the wonder again. Paul Halloran, final thoughts, getting ready for the 50th anniversary of Secretariat, man. Yeah, I was going to mention that. You know, people should go. If, if you have the book, read the last chapter. The, the, the last chapter in the Secretariat book by William Neck is all about that Belmont. It's among the best writing I've ever heard. But you know how we didn't have time for this tonight, and, and it's not related to the Belmont, but, you know, the – the, the specter of a unreasonable suspension has been hanging over Linda Rice's head for the last three years, two years. The New York, the, the courts in New York today took the New York Gaming Commission out to the woodshed and knocked some sense into them. Suspension revoked. She does have to pay the fine. They didn't say she was innocent. They said the three-year suspension was so out of, ridiculously out of proportion and unfair that they revoked the whole thing. I'm glad Linda Rice gets to wake up tomorrow and go to the barn without that hanging over her head. Okay, there's our it's a, astute reporter uh, bringing it uh, bringing it to us, uh, you know for sure uh, in real time on the Belmont Stakes and Linda Rice and uh, that we appreciate the news there, uh, Paul Halloran. Um, everyone else, again, thanks everyone for watching. I have nothing else to add. It's going to be an incredible weekend of stakes. Please crush your bets. This weekend, starting tomorrow, Friday into Saturday, for the 50th anniversary of Secretariat, myself,
Paul Halloran and Patrick Kunzel from the HHH Racing Podcast will all be there. We'll send out some pictures. Crush your bets this weekend. For Pete Visco and Paul Halloran, it's been your host, Howard Kravitz, episode 265 of the HHH Racing Podcast. Have a great weekend. We'll see you next Monday for the Belmont Stakes Weekend Recap Show. Take care, everyone. Have a great night. Bye-bye.